My name is Dr. Vanessa Appiah and I'm a consultant in sexual health and HIV medicine. I'm also an honorary senior lecturer at Queen Mary University London and my work really revolves around race, ethnicity and health and just looking at um, health equity and how we can um, support marginalised populations to access health. So many of my patients have expressed concerns about the COVID-19 vaccine and I have to say um, it's not just my patients in my clinical work, I'm seeing that in the community engagement work as well. That concern and anxiety about um, COVID-19 vaccines is really real. And when we think about these concerns of what do I hear, for each person it can be different and I think that's really important to um, recognise but also you do see the same themes that come out um, quite a lot. Last week I was doing a community engagement um, event and you know, someone shouted out, you know, how could we trust the government? How could we trust what has been said in the messaging? Um, it feels really confusing. Where are they getting their information from? Um, so this lack of trust in societal structures in general is a definite root of this concern. I also talk about misinformation from social media and from word of mouth. Um, within communities, many are relying on others to understand what's happening um, within COVID and getting their in, um, education and information, not just from the TV um, or radio, but social media. Another theme that I've been really working with colleagues about is the concern that people have about when they had difficulties in interactions with healthcare previously. So they may have had a negative interaction where they felt they weren't listened to or um, they felt that there was some bias against them. So they don't trust the individual from healthcare that's giving them this information about COVID-19 vaccines. So all of this really um, is reflected in a number of the conversations that I've been having. But when we look more closely at those from um, Black, Asian or minority ethnic communities, sometimes the conversations um, often become more specific. And when we talk about the mistrust, it is often historically rooted in episodes in the past where there have been episodes of unethical medical research that have been documented that have really resonated with people and, and thinking about other public health initiatives that have not um, protected those um, from minority ethnic communities. So therefore, specifically, um, these communities are thinking, how can I trust this intervention? And what's really key here is that this mistrust is understandable. Others talk about history of pharmaceutical companies and some of their rollout in um, parts of Africa um, that have not been ethical. So this again is another concern that's specifically talked about and it has a real damaging effect on um, many communities on their decision making about taking vaccines. Others talk about um, what, what are the um, vaccines actually made of and I'm, I'm concerned because I think it's made up of um, eggs, other meat products and this information is perpetuated in social media so therefore people think right I don't want to touch it, um, I don't, I'm concerned that it's not halal, I'm concerned about what my faith leader will say when I take um, the vaccine. So these are all factors that drive this concern and, and um, also mistrust and there are key factors that we need to address when supporting people to make an in, informed choice about vaccines. So many people ask, are the vaccines halal? Is it appropriate for me to take it? Is it in line with my faith? Is it kosher? What we would say is that there have been a number of position statements from key um, faith groups to really guide us on this. The British Islamic Association um, and the Chief Rabbi have um, reported in their position statements to give assurance that um, these vaccines can be used for those who are concerned as to whether they are halal or kosher. Now a common question I get is that one of the constituents of um, the Oxford vaccine is ethanol and so some people have said okay um, I'm not allowed to take um, alcohol so by me having this vaccine will that stop me, will that go against what I believe in 
And it has been noted that the amount of ethanol um, within the um, Oxford vaccine is extremely small to, um, for it to cause any concern with regards to alcohol intake. And it's also been acknowledged by um, a number of um, faith and community leaders and within their position statements, they've also acknowledged that it is safe to take. Healthcare professionals have a key role in alleviating a person's reluctance to be vaccinated or any misgivings about vaccination, while also respecting their views and autonomy. Um, so in my um, clinical work and also in the work that I've been doing in the community, there have been a number of key um, ideas and um, approaches that I've taken. So first of all, is really creating that safe space for an honest and respectful discussion. So someone feels safe to open up about their concerns and fears, giving you the opportunity to respond with accurate information. Also acknowledging that their concerns are understandable. Expressing that um, vaccines are not mandatory, um, but whilst advocating for their use, explaining that it is we are only giving this information for an, in, an informed choice and it is their individual choice. I think it's important to be honest and open about the uncertainties. Don't overcommit. We know what we know, um, but there is a lot that we are still learning. And for many people, that honesty is really important. And acknowledge also that we are not going to change things by sometimes by just one conversation. So offering that repeated space um, for you to repeatedly give that information is also crucially important. You can complete the full module and learn more at learning.bmj.com.